questions? I know it's a lot of information, so some questions might take a while to come. So if you have a question after, oh, yeah? What works if you your own for all of the It's to make you more tired. So the release of melatonin makes you more sleepy. So some people with, um, uh, what's the disorder that keeps you awake all night? Um, insomnia, yes. So one of the treatments for insomnia is, is melatonin injections. But they're not very effective. It's, for, for people with a, a, a disorder like that, it's usually bad sleep behaviour. You know, they're, 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 they've got their laptop on, their lights on, they like to party, so they're starting to become a late phase sleeper than an early phase. So what, that's what they do, is they trigger off. But a way to treat that as well is just to shift their body clock. Because they want to go to bed later, they want to get up later. So you, each day, you shift them an hour through the clock. So essentially, you need around 24 days to correct that behaviour. What happens is you shift them around all the way around the clock, and then they're going to bed when they're tired. And then you, you hopefully set their behaviour there so they don't keep going around the clock. So that's what they want to do, is they want to keep going around the clock. So, um, since it seems to be related to light and um, practice in light, there are people who like to go to sleep with the lights on, or in some places where it's not you're good. sleeping with the, the wrong switch of the lights. Okay. What, what can you like You can get night lights that come with different light changes. So a lot of new laptops, they use um, red spectrum light. That, that encourages more sleep. So you can change just the light spectrum in the room for the night light. The candle light's very good for that. It's very low and it doesn't trigger off too much. It's usually the artificial light. So these strobe lights are flickering. And you know, normal light bulbs are very high intense white light. So ultraviolet spectrums and things like that you want to try and remove from the lighting. So you can just change the light source. If you want to have a light on, that's quite simple. Yeah, yeah. Um, do all uh, do all these people who snore? They it's snoring that um, all these are shifted with upper. Very much, because often that's the upper airway resistance happening. So if there's enough negative pressure, the airway will completely collapse, and they will have to come out of a deep stage and increase their muscle tone, and they. <laughs> They wake up like that, so they can wake up gasping for air, and that's disturbing their sleep. So actually treating the snoring can actually reduce their symptoms. So you can use CPAP, so that gives positive pressure to keep the airway open. Some people get a mandibular device to pull the bottom jaw forward, because uh, your base of your tongue is at the back of the airway. So if you have a recessed jaw or a large tongue, actually having something in your mouth will pull it forward and keep the airway open. So there's other treatments for snoring. So in the, the, there's a few trip, the only one that's really 100% effective is CPAP, continuous positive airways of pressure, because it's always keeping the airway open. It's just very difficult to sleep with a mask on. So it takes a while to adjust somebody to that treatment. But when they adjust, they feel so much better and they want to keep it on. Because as soon as they stop using it, all their symptoms come back really strong. But snoring is quite a common symptom. Sure? about the links between obesity and Well, obviously, because the increased weight and fat deposition around the upper airway will increase the collapse. So this is why it's very much linked to obesity. But you can have some anatomical changes. I mean, snoring is more common in a man because we have a cricoid and we have much more going on in the upper airway than we do. So then, I think it's very common in the uh, yes, absolutely. Weight management is, is essential. But the thing is, if you're tired, you're not going to be able to exercise as much, are you? So actually, it's improving their sleep quality, they will be more alert and they'll be more capable of exercising, and then they will have weight loss. So often, once we initiate treatment, after a period, we can take it away. Last year, we were awarded a Nobel Prize in relation to the circadian rhythm, and this is closely um, linked to sleep. So, in relation to that, are there any physiological changes in people who have circadian rhythm sleep disorders? Because they have some symptoms like they, they are tired, they don't they rest. They have all the other risks. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't rest as well. So, do they have physiological changes? Yeah, yeah, there's blood pressure, heart rate, and things like that, increased risk of 
um, stroke. So actually, you know, treatment circadian rhythm disorders is quite beneficial as well, but they're very difficult to cure circadian rhythm disorders. Apart from lots of questions, I think, and see what's next. Yeah, so just a little bit of uh, clarity. So when we look at uh, uh, the sleep, it's a recommended daily sleep. Is that total daily sleep in a day or just night sleep? Because uh, the observation is that, you know, we prefer to have nighttime sleep, but some people do have naps. Uh -huh. If it's part of their normal routine and it doesn't disturb their work pattern, it's fine because that will give them a little bit of extra quality. So some people do have a siesta, isn't it? They call it, yeah. But it's fine. As long as they're not having lots and lots and lots and lots of siestas, <laughs> then it's not fine. Could you just describe some of the things you can advise the simple sleep hygiene measures? Yep, so going to bed at a strict time to make sure you have a regular bedtime and you have a regular wake time. Um, no stimulants, so caffeine is a bad one. Um, lots of artificial light sourcing and things like that. Um, and sleep diaries can help improve sleep hygiene because what it does, it highlights the person what they are doing that's disturbing their sleep. For some people, it's like, well, I can't figure out what's causing the sleep problem. So actually, get to do a diary. It's like a food diary, isn't it? It will just show them where, what's going wrong. And then they can modify it and then see how the diary is improved after the treatment. Okay, so I have two comments. One, I would have wanted to hear more about the triangulations between the quality of sleep, uh, melatonin and cortisol, because cortisol and melatonin, we know, have uh, a circadian rhythm in, 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 their, in their physiological parameters, mm -hmm. but one coming one towards the point when you're about to wake up, mm -hmm. while melatonin is coming on probably uh, in the middle of the night. And then this in, it, in its own arrangement actually affects the quality of sleep. So I, I would have wanted to hear a little more about that triangulation. Um, the other thing that... Oh, it's not... Yeah. It's obviously steroids affect your cortisol production, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. after that, steroids causes insomnia. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I wanted to ask, um, the sleep diaries that you're talking about are able to capture the sleep during the night, but you probably are supposed to, are supposed to document the naps that you have during the, during the day. Yes, yeah, so what it is is you complete the sleep diary in the morning when you wake up mostly. But even the naps that you get during the day are yeah, supposed you to be in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, what are the dangers of resisting a nap? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can be in the noisiest of rooms, but when you're extra tired, you can fall, fall asleep. That's what I mean, people can fall asleep driving and all sorts. That's what I mean, you know, you're, you're, if you're not getting enough sleep, your body demands it. Yes. You don't necessarily get it, but you can demand it. Mm -hmm. So that you, that's what I mean, it, it makes you very, you know, unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more question. Is that very not so difficult? Mm -hmm. It's all to do with information. Now we've had it to develop in teaching, we call them memory books. Next time you hear, you hear it, it has where to stick. Actually, for this lecture, we thought that earlier on that Ivan would have given an introductory basic physiology of sleep. But we thought, you know, let's go for the real thing. We might one hour so you people can go and do about it. Um, <coughs> And the other comment I wanted to make is um, uh, at the end of line now, we have three sets of sleep equipment. And people with my help, we have gone through the setup of the equipment and the recording, and the tests are now ready for use. Um, like they did for the women's hospital. Who remembers what they did? When they opened three service, the sleep tests are going to be free until that tests have been made. So if you want a test of yourself, do not worry, we will not put your name. We will anonymize it. Or if you have someone who think you need sleep, um, maybe that's your husband or friend, um, the patient in your service that you think needs sleep, uh, you start sending them to the lab institutes. There are two options. One, 
you can test at home, but that will depend on Ivan, who is going to be initially in this service, you could test at home. But if you fail his assessment, then you can test to have a bedroom in the landing street, with the shower, with the bath, with the everything, you can sleep there and do your test. So please pass this information on. I am not closing, I am not the chairman, but I want to thank Mike uh, for breaking down this thing. This thing is actually more complicated than It I is. People thought the thing was simple, you just close your eyes and wake up. <laughs> no. No. And, and as you know, as you said, patients, after the ones we have to pay, it takes an average of two hours to score one sleep. Even we are going to start with the respiratory uh, sonogram, the nine things he showed you, but even that alone takes about two hours to score and validate. So you can imagine uh, uh, um, the costs of this. But for the first 30 to 50 patients, please send people to get a free evaluation. Okay, well, I would like to say thank you to Mike. There was clearly uh, several things in that lecture. <laughs> Too much information for most of us <laughs> in the time, but we have the slides and we can look at it. And there were lots of interest and lots of questions, so I think you hit, the, you hit the, the spot there. So thank you very much for that. I just wanted also to say that if Mike has arranged for us to have CPAP machines come across here, so when we find people who've got a problem, we will actually be able to treat them. Um, and the link will continue between Plymouth and uh, here. So, um, I will, first of all, I just want to say thanks everyone for coming, and finally, thanks Mike. Thank you.